only we people are this we are greedy we looks after only after us like we say this world is for human being uh. no not at all it's for everybody insect animals and all so how old is this plantation Around 200 years 200 years This is now nutmeg. Oh, this is nutmeg. Yes. I wish you could smell the delicate lingering perfume ah, of this nutmeg. Delicate. Now cinnamon tree. Ah, cinnamon tree. Okay. There you can see the loads of bimli. Salute. Cheers. Yes. So this is the urak. The first thing is the slight sweetness of the cashew, mm. huh? And then slowly yeah, the slowly warmth. Yeah, warm. Oh, I love that chutney. So the chutney has that sourness of the fruit, mm. and then the earthy sweetness of the bella of the jaggery. Mmm. The fish curry is excellent. If you want a little more kick, you basically go for some kismur. Mmm. All spice. This is like uh, your nose no smells like a cinnamon. My smells like cardamom. He's really smelling like something else, like that. It. Is. So it's basically how those volatiles react with yeah. your olfactory senses. So taste is never absolute. Taste is always relative, and therefore one should be tolerant when it comes to food, food. like pretty yeah. much everything else in <laughs> life. No. Yes. So we're about 30 kilometers from Panjim, and we've arrived at Savoy Plantation. If memory serves me right, I have been here to this place perhaps about 15 years ago when we were covering this for our erstwhile magazine back in the day called Taste and Travel. This is an organic plantation completely. So they are organic since origin. That's many many years ago. Sachin, how are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. So I am with Mr. Sachin Shetty. So you are what generation of this plantation? Six, ten, seven. My children are seven generation. Oh. Six, ten. So how old is this plantation? Two hundred years. Two hundred years. You can see it from the trees. Uh, we have some trees very old. Uh, for example, mango and all are last for around two hundred years. What type of crop we are doing? Commercial crop, where you get every year crop. Uh, But here we get alternate year. Oh, okay. This is two different way of doing grafting. Okay. But this require passion. You know, to get the first crop, you have to wait for almost thirty, forty years. Thirty, forty years to get the first crop. My goodness, my goodness. So this is basically when you plant this, you're planting not for, for yourself, but for the next for generation. Only we people are this. We are greedy. We look after only after us. Uh, like, like we say, this world is for human being. Uh, no, not at all. It's for everybody, insect, animals, and all. Like pepper crops and all. During harvesting time, we keep five, ten percent for the birds and all to eat. Mm. When the uh, pepper ripe, the mm. green pepper, birds are eating that. Uh, Uh, so we leave it for them. So it is a different way of doing things uh, then. By the way, this type of setup is called kulagar. Kulagar. Kulagar is a combination of plants and trees which grows well with each other. We have ten hectares of land. This is uh, around six seven thousand square meter area pond. Oh. This big pond as a base in a U shape. Our ancestor did the terrace plantation. So what do you grow here? What all do you have here? I can see banana. We have betel nut, uh. banana, coconut. We have then same uh, tree. This is now betel nut. Uh. We make use of this space uh. for taking two crop: betel nut and this pepper one. Pepper, okay. This is what that bimbli. This is a uh, this bimbli. Bimbli. Now Hindu people we don't use vinegar in cooking. Now slowly, new generation, new youngsters and all they. Uh, But the uh, olden my till my mother's uh, this age, even my wife is not using. It was only bimli that was bimli, used. Bimli, star fruit, imli, ah. all this tamarind, this and that. So absolutely no vinegar. No vinegar. But in Goa, mostly people are using vinegar from coconut palm. Correct, palm vinegar. A palm vinegar. 
Some places we have sprinkler irrigation system. Some places we have this open canal system. Okay. Open canal system is since we are in the valley. Uh. This side a hill, that side a hill. At different level we have small small ponds, maybe about 80 square meter, okay. 100 square meter. So we leave it till it fills up the pond. Okay. Water is oozing out from the hillside, and when it's full, we release the water and it flows from these canals. Okay. And then the people are scooping down the water to the plant, like in, uh -huh. in this shape. Where you just entered and uh, we had yeah. offered you something. No? Yeah. If you see sideways, something is hanging. Kalle, we call in our language. They scoop down the water. Oh, so they scoop the water to the plant, yes, to the tree. To the plant. Always they scoop in between two trees more water, 80%. Only 20% to the roots. When you feed them very closely, roots are tangling there only. Mm. So they should go in search of water. Oh. As the root grows, the plant grows. Oh, that's interesting. And there are more number of plants and trees dies in the world because of excess water than the less water. Ah. One way, if you are not watering, chalta hai. Lekin if you go extra water, if you give, he gives, myself, no, then it dies. Different time of the year also, you have a different technique. Summer time, if you plant any plant and the same variety, you plant it in the monsoon time, different technology. One plant only, Fantastic. different technology. Fantastic. Because in monsoon, you had excess water. Correct. So you have to raise the soil at the root okay. so that it drains properly. Okay. Now you have to do opposite way. Ah, okay. This is how we put a new plant, a new betel nut. So when, as this for nursery plant grows taller and taller, mm. they become bulky, you know, mm. more weight. So the God has given them this property, extra root for extra supporting. Extra root support, okay. This is now banyan tree. Oh, this must be really old, no? So these people, they believe that this tree was about 50, 60 meters ahead. There, they had put a stone there. Uh. The, all these people who lives here, around 10-12 families, they offer a bottle of cashew feni and one roti they make. Okay. Roti, when they are making roti, they make so thick. Uh. They call rot for that. Okay. Uh. Rot means thick. Thick. Uh. Okay. So what they believe that the devil, somebody destroyer sits on the tree. Uh. Uh. If you are not satisfying him, he will destroy our place. But when they are offering not at this place, this tree here, uh. they offer it there on stone because they believe that that is original. That is the origin of the tree. Yeah. But this symbol, scientifically proved, is the banyan, kokum tree and all, symbolizes a lot of water underground. So, where the, we have this wet land, we grow all this betel nut, coconut, huh. nutmeg, this cocoa and all these trees. Huh. On the dry land, where we are watering or some part leave watering or every after 15 days or one month, so there we grow cashew nut, mango, jackfruit and all these type of things in a bulk. See, this is now jackfruit which we are cut uh. two years back. Jackfruit trees and all, we have to make a big barrels to do pickling of uh. green mangoes and all, uh, okay. loads of salt. Okay, okay. And at the bottom to seal it, we are not using any wax and all. So people have to use uh, oil which they extract from the kokum seeds. Uh, okay. Kokum seeds, it's oily. So now when people come here, mm -hmm. so what do they do? So you take them for a walk, walk. To, okay? Depending on you, you people, like the visitors, Okay. what they want, what time they have. Like so typically how much time do visitors need to spend here, about two hours? Normally, I'd, no. Overall, I'd seen about 30 to 40 minutes. Of the walk. walk. Okay, and then they go Before and they that, sit and eat something. Eat something. This is one of the mango trees, see this now. Oh, the biggest crop we had was about 15, 20 years back, 18,000 mangoes. Oh my goodness, how do you harvest? The person climb on the tree. This is a new foliage. No, new foliage. Where you have this new foliage, no mangoes for that. I've never seen a mango tree this big in my life. So Not this will be over 100, 150 years yes. old. Yes. <laughs> this tree has seen perhaps four generations yes. of mango pluckers. <laughs> This is now nutmeg. Oh, this is nutmeg? Yes. Oh! This is not yet ready. When it's it will be ready, on this line, uh. it splits on its own. On the tree? And, uh, on the tree and the nut with the maize fall down. Nut inside and it is holding like this, no? 
Oh. It's like a calyx of a flower. That time this maize will be dark red in color. If you have one or two tree, uh. you can wait f till it falls down. Okay. Since we have hundreds of trees, when 10-20% crop fall down, uh. person climb on the tree and then with the stick he hit it up. Uh. See, not yet ready. Not yet ready. See, this maize will be dark red in color. Correct. Even you can see the mark of uh. a maize on yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah. So this is the maize on the outside. Maize, yeah, outside. So now with this, what can you do? If you uh, use, you will get slight smell, especially uh, for pulao or uh, really? fried rice, biryanis and all. You mm. know, tender nutmeg, uh, people are here, the Catholic people, they take during Christmas time. I wish you could smell the delicate lingering perfume uh, of this nutmeg. Delicate. Yeah. This delicate smell, it's not strong like yeah. spice. So this they use for uh, cakes and all during oh. Christmas time. So when they Catholic, macerate uh, those fruits and Catholic all Catholic people, they come here to buy. And we sell it for the slightly higher rate for them. Only for that time, no? Correct. See what farmers are doing, even in the market. Uh, whenever we have some occasion, uh, like festivals, you know, we hike up our rate. That uh, um, festival is only for two days or Correct. three days. Correct, so you get some. So that's a time to make a money. little more money. <laughs> <laughs> I like your honesty in saying that. This is one of this uh, now cinnamon tree. Ah, cinnamon tree, okay. So once we cut it, the, from the chop bark, we have to take the skin mm. off. So, so this is how many years now, Sachin? This is now seven to eight years. Seven to eight years. Yes. So how many years will you have to wait? Some five, six years more. And then you will chop it? Yes. So from the chop part, you will extract the yes. bark. But the tree is not dying. Again, it is growing from that new. See, this is Indian cinnamon. Ah. There are many number of varieties of cinnamon. Out of many numbers, mm. only eight of them are edible cinnamon. Uh, this is one of them. But tell me, so the Sri Lankan cinnamon is cinnamon? Yes. This is cassia? Yes. That's why cassia, we call it as an Indian cinnamon. So the cinnamon and the bay leaf are from the same tree? See, what we are using here in India. But elsewhere is different plants altogether. In the market, huh. bay leaves come from one tree, cinnamon comes from another tree. Uh, these are all yeah, pan, is it? Pan. We call it as a white pan. Mm, quite Dark astringent. Oh, very peppery, huh? Uh -huh. very hot. Compared to this, another one is more this. Really? Mm -hmm. Kalapan. Kalapan. Locally. <laughs> I will watch what happens to Sachin first. <laughs> no, not so hot like chili. It's still, see. Mm. It's also slightly yes. more astringent, no? Oh, there's some pepper here, no? So this can be consumed? Yes. Okay. So this has to be just... Uh, Dry. Dried. The white chilies. This, uh, is it naturally grown? Yeah, naturally. Good. Yeah? Yes. So nature has presented you with white chilies. Yes, white chili. That's a star fruit tree. Mm, star fruit. You can see the star fruit saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot. Mm. This is that all spice. All spice. Where huh? you get a combination flavor. Mm. All spice. This is like uh, your no, no smells like a cinnamon, my smells like cardamom, he's really smelling like something else, like that it. You know, that's the whole point. So see, when it comes to taste. Aroma is 80% of taste. Ah, and, aroma, right. And basically when you crush it or when you heat something, it releases volatiles. It's mm -hmm. how the volatiles react with the olfactory senses mm -hmm. that determines what note you're registering, that determines the association that you're making. He may make an association with cinnamon, I may perhaps uh -huh, make an right. association with clove. That's the interesting thing because about I food. Because even from uh, this uh, Indian origin people, uh, I got at least 10, 20 or 30 answers. Mm. As they call pan patta. Mm. Even pan patta, they say. There's a bit of astringency also in that aroma. So, taste is never absolute. Taste is always relative. And therefore, one should be tolerant when it comes to food. food. Like pretty yeah. much everything else in <laughs> life. No? Yes. That is for the sale. So all these are what people can buy from here? Yeah, people can buy. Mm. Is it mustard or hingu? Oh. It's not like garlic. Ah, ah, alam. Ah. Alam. This is called a garlic creeper which gives flowers. We are not mm. using this on cooking. But can, is this edible? No, I don't know. Okay. We are not using it. Okay, I won't risk eating it now. No, no, don't eat it. <laughs> There you can see the loads of bim leaf. Oh! So this is called saw coriander. Yeah, saw coriander. It propagates from the root. Our mm. normal dhania comes from the seeds, no? 
So is this usable? Yeah, usable. Oh. Coconuts are like the green coconut or this coconut for the normal cooking here. Yeah. So this is used for your consumption? Our consumption and selling. People and selling or here. they buy it? Yes. Ah. We separate the dry one. We, ah. That goes for extraction of coconut oil. The copra. Those are now coconut beams. Oh, which, these are made with coconut? Coconut tree. bark. Oh, okay. See, these are that bomb. The bird's eye chili. Mm. Or do it like this once. Tip of a tongue. Only once. Mm. Now you bite it. I can feel its prick. <laughs> And I can feel that the area that is spicy expand on my tongue. This is dangerous. Kids don't do this at home. This is now passion fruit creeper. Oh, passion fruit. Yeah, this is all. I think that kokum is much needed after that long plantation walk. I think Sachin is a repository of knowledge. Identifying ingredients that you see, but you see them only in the processed form, like the nutmeg. Looking at the Indian cinnamon, learning that the Indian cinnamon, that plant is also responsible for the bay leaf that we use typically here in India, the biryani patta. Ah, that's refreshing. Delicious. Mm, it's quite interesting. Texture-wise, it's like a khari, but there's some sugar there, some sweetness. Mm. Urak drink, and this is the neat drink. You taste this. So this is the urak. Urak. I can definitely smell the cashew uh -huh. in that. No, the flavor of the cashew, the fresh cashew, that the ripe cashew. See, that's the charm of that. You know, the best urak, according to our the Goan people, uh -huh. is. The hurak which flavors like what you said, cashew flavor. Ah. So some people they distill without that flavor, they distill it hard. So it becomes more stronger. Ah. So, so this hurak is our first distill. First. And the second subsequent cashew distill fenny. is fenny. fenny. Alcohol is uh, differs from a distiller to distiller. So this like one? 11 percent to 14 percent. This actually. one would be? Around 11 percent. But you don't do this? this? No, we okay. don't. Do So what's your name? Shriya. Shriya. So you finished your studies and now you're helping your dad. So you've always grown around this. This must be very normal to you. <laughs> yes. huh? Like whenever I go to city, like I feel like there are some le less plants. It's different. Like no? it's different. Yeah, from there and here. Ah. Here it is cool, silent. Ah. Now like uh, all the people like to visit silent places. No? Yes. So what did you study? Uh, zoology, masters in zoology. Zoology. Okay. In fact, I have started culturing honeybees over here. Oh! Since there are many plants here, wild plants which give wood nectar. Okay. So, I've started. so do you have any honey here? Uh, at present, uh, last year because of that uh, cyclone, it okay. uh, just uh, affected it. Oh, so okay. We couldn't remove it last year. Like now, uh, we'll get like four rainy season. We have to remove. Ah. When you come here, so you should probably also meet Shreya, Sachin's daughter, and ask her if the honey is ready. Very nice. You know, and I think people need to come to places like these and appreciate the fact where does food come from? Most children don't know it, right? They see honey coming out of a bottle. You know, but where does that honey, before it goes into a bottle, where does it originate? You know, and I think that's so important. And I think you guys are doing such a wonderful job here with this. And I wish you also the very best as you help your dad and you take this forward. Yes, you enjoy. Yeah, thank you, Shreya. This is a lemon. The lemon. Okay. With loads of salt. Same style mango. for the green mango. The, that's a, with that's a masala. A whole green mango and then you stuff it. Stuff like it. This. So this is what you taste with the urak. I can just All stay the, very content just yeah. smelling it. After mm. looking only, mm. when you find this uh, urak is slightly cloudy, that is with the flavor, that is the genuine wrap. Uh, you know the people prefer, the genuine Goan fellow will love that. So if it's too clear, that means yeah, too, too distilled. Clear, yeah, too distilled. Uh, so it has to be a little slightly yes. hazy. Mm. The first thing is the slight sweetness of the cashew. Mm. Uh, and then slowly yeah, the slowly warmth. Yeah, warm. 
So people drink this neat as well. Yes. Uh. See, it started with the neat. Uh. And as we now modified, mm. exposed to the world, we try to mix it. In. Salute. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, this has some lemon in that. Yes. And What? then some lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. But uh, basically, this uh, you know during season time of this Urak season, uh. there is a shortage of limka. Oh, because everybody is putting it. No, the limka and Urak goes well. It, today we were not having limka. Ah. Uh. So we put a sprite in that. But well, limka is a combination. Limka is the ultimate. You ask like all these small small bar tavern, all this, everybody is loading with that. Everybody is getting shortage of limka, even the supplier. Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess. I remember that ad of Limka, which ah, used to Limka. talk about the isotonic salts. <laughs> Maybe it's the isotonic salts that go very well with the urak. What I notice in the urak as I'm drinking it neat. After that sweetness, and before the bitter, mm -hmm. for a brief moment, there's also a touch of slight sourness. Yeah, sourness. That's why you know the Goan people, genuine Goan, Goan fellow, will huh. drink urak only for the season time. Once the monsoon starts, okay, they stop uh, distilling urak and all. And as the monsoon time, as the day goes off, uh. that becoming more bitter and more smell, different weird uh. smell. So that we don't like. So urak season is from March. March, yeah, mid March till May. Till May. Till monsoon comes. After that, no urak. When the uh, fruit falls down, more of watery, no? Ah, uh, okay. We got it, no? Yeah. For uh, juice to be fermented and also more water in there, ah. so it become a tedious process. Tedious Labor process. Oriented. I It's think expensive. we should try some of the pickles. So basically, in the local tavern, yes, tavern. take your shot of drink, drink and hold it, in and hold hand. it. Mm. Now, face expression is important. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but lime the salt. <laughs> Mm. That urak comes as a soothing balm now in this case. A salty hit. So where should we begin now? It's up to you, like any way. Okay. But normally we go for the rice on the left, curry next to that. Okay. Here. Always the pickle on the left side. Correct. Always pickle on the left. So would you like some salt and pickle on the kismur. left, and the kismur and all this stuff, rest of the part here. Would you like some kismur? Kismur's kismur important part is smoking. Kismur after mixing all with great coconut mm. and all, you have to smoke it. So you spread it on the plate, uh. red hot charcoal, uh. keep it center, uh. and then pour as fresh as possible coconut oil, whatever you available at your house. Okay. And then cover it. Mix fish curry with that pepper and dry coconut. This is the chana watane, the star fruit chutney. Maybe some chicken. What about you? Can I serve yes, you some? Yes. Some this thing watane oh, kai. Little bit. Some fish. Fish no only one or two prawns. That's it. Okay. Mix. Yes, bas. Baji. The raw banana. Make a beginning with the fish curry and the ukade sheet. Yeah. Mm. This curry seems to have rested for a while. What we prefer is mm. we cook this type of curry uh, previous day. Previous day. Next day you have to. That you get the hundred percent flavor. Mm. In Kathli cuisine, they have that charpatel. Charpatel from bok. They make it and keep it for marination. That's right. Two days, three days, four days. Yeah. Fish curry is excellent. If you want a little more kick, you basically go for some kismur. Huh? Hmm. I prefer this kismur with this solkadi rice. Yeah. This solkadi and rice. And my choice is if fried prawns are there, I will keep some prawns. Save it for the last. Ah. This mackerel kismur hmm. has a very smoky sort of a flavor, and also in terms of its character, it's a dense sort of a fish. Hmm. So you get more on the bite. So kismur can be made with anything. Prawn, mackerel. You want on ash gourd? Ash gourd. Mm. Ash gourd and mix it with uh, fenugreek. Is I don't know what else they are putting. My mother and ah. and then you 
make, make that mixture uh -huh. and then they dry it like this in the sun. Oh, okay. So it's like dumplings of sort. I don't know. What like wadi. Ah, wadi only. We call wadi. Ah, ah I get it. From that also we make a curry also. Ah. Also we make a kismur. I love that chutney. Oh, this is delicious. Did? Is there jaggery in that chutney? Mm. Oh, I love that chutney. So in the chutney, I have that sourness of the fruit. Mm. And then the earthy sweetness of the bella, of the jaggery. And then there's some uh, red chilies. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Do you also give it a seasoning of some mustard seeds and things like that? Yes, yes. This is absolutely delicious. So I think once you finish your walk here, this is exactly the sort of meal that you will be looking forward to. So how, what is the system? So people book two days in advance. So whoever is watching no, this... No, we want at least one day in advance. One day in advance. But people who have, you know, who are foodie, uh, loads of veg variety, non-veg variety. Then they should book a little more in advance. I prefer for them uh, at least three days, four three days. days. Because we would like to give them almost many fish items and mm. variety of. Banana is also very good. Plenty yeah. of coconut in that banana. This is a different fish. That mm. I don't know the English word, but this is called shetu. Mm. So this fish fry, what oil do you use? As per availability, okay. we use coconut oil or some sunflower and wow. whatever available. So typically what do people pay here for let's say these meals and the plantation tour? 950 including the meal mm. so you take all the tours most of the time i take them ah. otherwise we don't employ the professional people i mean they're supposed to be guides and all who tells you most mm. of the time the stories they don't tell you the fact because at end of the day they are waiting for the tips mm. that's important part of that so we don't do that we our person who works here he goes well, I've enjoyed this early evening experience at Sovayu Plantation. Thank you very much, you know, for taking the time to walk us through the plantation and show us nature in all its glory. So if you're planning your visit to Goa, definitely make sure to include Sovayu Plantation in your plans. You'll find all details in the video description below. You need to come here, take a walk with Mr. Shetye learn more about where all the food that we consume comes from, what it takes to produce that food and at the end of that very informative walk, sit down for a glorious spread of Saraswat cuisine cooked by the family here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Gourmet on the Road. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!